Well, thanks everyone for, for coming to this. We want to, Chris and I want to present this uh, grad cert in teaching meditation. Um, my name is Father John Dupush. I'm at CTC. Uh, I coordinate the, uh, the grad cert, but Chris Morris is the head of department. Chris, do you want to introduce yourself briefly? And Yeah, John, just to say a very warm welcome tonight. We've been working together for years, John and I, and we're delighted to share with you about this course and the possibilities. Um, and just to note also that there's the chat function. So we will have time at the end for questions um, as well. But if a question comes during our talk, feel free to put a chat in as we're going so that you don't lose it. You can just write straight in and we'll have a look at that at the end as well. But there'll be time to ask questions and talk at the end of just seven or eight slides we'll go through about the course. Thanks, Chris. So perhaps the, the this next slide um, is uh, an attempt to, Victoria, you might say, to give the scope of the, the, the graduate certificate. And there's two photographs here, and they're contrasting photographs. The first one, of course, is a beautiful photograph of a lake uh, and uh, these boats. Uh, and the whole idea that the one of the aims, uh, a very important aim of the graduate certificate is for personal development. So for us to reach the shore, we're all on a journey each of us, and um, reaching the shore, sometimes through stormy seas, but to reach the shore of our destiny, to reach, in fact, the shore of the stillness of the heart, that essential peacefulness at the very center of our being. And um, so that beautiful still lake there, uh, and which reflects the heavens and the earth because that is the value of reaching stillness at the very center of our being, uh, is because we do there uh, reflect both the heights above and the depths within, the highest heights of the transcendent God and the very center of our being. And these two reflect each other, so that in ourselves we discover God, and in God we discover ourselves. But also the two boats there are the two boats, and so we're all journeying together. And part of the scope of the certificate is for participants to journey together as they discover themselves and discover the infinite one who exceeds all knowledge. Again, of course, there's this idea of the clarity of the water, uh, because when the water is perfectly clear and still, you can see into the depths. So this clarity then, uh, free from all illusions, free from all masks and fears to reach that clarity. So that's one of the aspects of the certificate, uh, I think expressed well by that beautiful image. Then the other one then is uh, related, of course, but a little bit different. So it's a mosaic and here we have the water once again, but the water here uh, is providing nourishment for the, well, the doves that are here, the two birds, and the idea then of uh, reaching our own truth is that we might in turn become a source of life and nourishment for the others. That's why the certificate is also called teaching. Uh, not that we have to be, actually be involved in teaching, but uh, it's, we do in one way or the other always teach because our very being uh, teaches other people, even if it's by silence and um, not by talking or activities. So we become then a source of life for others. Um, but likewise, we are welcoming to others. And so the birds then are perfectly uh, at ease and they uh, are welcomed to the font there of life and they are safe. And so we provide uh, a feeling of safety to others who come and uh, uh, we can provide wholeness to them as well. So they feel safe uh, in the true teacher and all the question of beauty too, and all creatures are involved. And there's this idea of vulnerability too, because when we are vulnerable, then we can, uh, others feel at ease with us. Um, Chris, did you want to say any fur anything further on those two images and uh, the scope oh. of the grad cert? 
I'll, I'll take it to one more image, if that's okay, John, a, a photograph um, to sort of add to this. And here we have a young woman meditating. This is in a classroom at a Catholic school um, in Heidelberg, actually. And this classroom, we can see in the background that it's, I think it's a year eight classroom, perhaps. Um, and I wonder about this space that's being expressed here, this opportunity that is being reflected on the faces of these students. Um, and what word you might use when, when you see this, what's happening here. And as I was just talking to my wife earlier and I often say, oh, what's, the, what's the sort of key to this course? What, what's the core thing that's happening? And we were just talking a little bit about this, we called it a contemplative space. You could call it a prayerful space or a silent space or a place of well-being or goodness or whatever it might be, but that there's something, the whole sort of aim of what we're doing is opening up this space and for ourselves, firstly, to cultivate our own practices of prayer and meditation. And that could be any way. There's so many different ways from silence and praying with with scripture in Lexio Divina and imaginative approaches and in nature and all sorts of ways. So we could come to this course to go to cultivate our own, our own practice and learn practices as well. Um, and then the other, the other aspect, and John mentioned this is to develop skills, to be very practical. So out of this space, how do we lead? How do we lead a group like these young women? But then there could be young children. And at the other, there are students we're working with now. Um, I've got a student at the moment in an aged care facility or all sorts of different ways. What are the skills involved? So to open that space, we sort of see there. And to do that, we emphasize this experiential approach that we'll go through the three units of the course now. And in each case, we want to sort of have a thread of this practice in the tradition and in our contemporary situation today. John, did you want to mention anything or move to the, to the I, units? I think, I think we'll move to the units now because they follow sure. through easily from what you've been saying. And um, Good. So the, we have three units, uh, and uh, they can be done in any order, but I'll just present them here in uh, this order. So the first one then is, the title of it is Meditation and Evolving Tradition, because meditation is, in fact, uh, an extraordinarily rich field, and it has evolved over the centuries, the millennia, in fact, and is still evolving and, and growing. And I think each person too, as Chris mentioned, the experiential aspect. So our experience is evolving and developing as well. And uh, so the, the number of points here, and the first one I want to talk about is discovering one's own spiritual gift, because this is so important as we experience what works for us, we discover what particular gift we have. And one person's gift is different from another's. Of course, we all share our gifts as best we can, and uh, but to discover and to be able to name even one's gift. Uh, so that's a, a very important part of discovering oneself. And then the emphasis in this particular unit, this first of the units, is the practice of silent meditation. Um, so the emphasis then is upon silence, as distinct from other ones, which we'll talk about later. And then to look at the richness of the Christian spiritual experiences uh, over the centuries. There's a whole extraordinary, uh, untapped, really, people are not aware 
are the richness of the uh, Christian spiritual experience, which has been communicated by so many great teachers, and to sort of dip into that and to discover uh, great figures like John of the Cross, Ignatius of Loyola, the Greek fathers, the women of the Middle Ages, and so on. And um, so to delve dip into all of that, and to discover then, in particular, the distinctive character of Christian meditation, because it has a distinctive character, its own contribution to make. And uh, uh, it is different, um, and complementary, but different to mindfulness, which is so popular today, and Buddhism likewise, which is so popular. And to see uh, by linking with these, to understand them, to discover also what is the contribution that Christianity, Christian meditation can make to the vast field of this uh, evolving tradition of meditation. So perhaps go on to the next one, if you like, Chris. Sure. And this next one then is the title is Meditation and Well-Being. Uh, and the question then comes about what is wholeness? Uh, to investigate that, uh, the rich idea of wholeness in body, mind and spirit. Uh, because the purpose of, to, of this meditation, um, among many other activities that we do, is to come to healing, uh, healing of whatever uh, needs to be healed, but also enhancement because meditation enables us to enhance uh, the gifts that are given to us, enhance ourselves in body, mind and spirit. Uh, so that whole field then of healing and en enhancement. Another particular emphasis of this unit is the practice of praying with the scriptures. The technical term for that is Lectio Divina, but it is here uh, using the word um, as a way of entering into contemplation. The previous unit emphasized silence. This one here emphasizes the word in all the richness of the word, which of course comes from silence and leads to silence and contemplation. Part of this unit also deals with the psychology and spirituality, this complex relationship because they influence each other. The person's psychology, psychological character, uh, has an influence on their spirituality, and vice versa, their spiritual dimension impacts upon their own uh, mental well-being. Uh, and then the, 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 the fifth point here to mention is the value of the aging process, uh, that age has its own vocation, and to uh, enable meditation to function and enhance aging. And aging can bring a clarity and truthfulness to meditation, um, to our whole lives, actually. And so to de develop, delve into that. So, Chris, I I've perhaps talked enough about that. We, should we go on to the, the, the next unit, which is the one that you're particularly involved with as well? And that is the teaching meditation and prayer, a kind of integrating unit if you like about how to teach how to lead um, meditation and prayer in different contexts so it's as we're going through and learning and practicing we will often begin to think well i i want to lead this way of prayer or meditation i seem to be drawn to that. I've been developing my practice and I, I want to lead that. Um, and in this context, which may be very varied from classrooms, schools, parent communities, in parishes, in a home, gathering a group there, in the kind of areas of chaplaincy, in, in health care, in prisons, in aged care, perhaps in a retreat setting, so these are just examples and they keep expanding as students um, do the course and, and engage with different groups and different ways of meditating and bringing those riches that John was talking about into people's lives. Um, so part of that is how do we do it? And to kind of work together in the unit to develop these, what they call facilitation skills, 
how to perhaps begin leading a group, how to, how to transition a group into a, a meditation practice, how to teach something from the tradition um, to help people learn about the meditation and then the kind of skills involved to practice perhaps a, a relaxation exercise and then transitioning in with you know the use of some a candle and the use of a, a, a bell those sorts of things so breaking down those facilitation skills to allow the practices to become accessible to different people what's it like when you've got very young children doing you know a minute of meditation here or engaging in Lexio Divina um, how would you do that in a parish with a group of adults so there are similarities and then there's these different groups that we would together um, talk and learn together and practice together how to do that and there'll be a scaffolding or a sort of framework to work with um, and that last point is throughout this unit we work towards a portfolio that is a, a kind of project where we plan a program of meditation so you know six six um, sessions with a group what does that look like as as it develops and grows for the group and then how to plan a session so we feel very comfortable very able to go to the group and um, and share what we've learned in in helpful ways so this unit allows us to bring things together and teach and lead and and lead and teach together in the group too to learn from each other and see different ways and come out with these facilis facilitation skills so just a little bit on then the organization of the course so we can do those three units we've talked about over one year and complete the course in a year if we choose to or over a longer period so some students will just do one unit at a time we could enroll in the course um, with assessment that is to get an award the graduate certificate or audit the courses um, that is to sit in and in, be involved without doing the assessment and that is um, an option too and each of the units the three units involve 24 hours of online sessions that is through zoom online face to face and that's on saturdays for um, for four hours each saturday um, so those 24 hours of face to face learning and then these 12 hours of homework so you have an activity to prepare each week um, and then some other practices we do and reflect on so the 12 hours of learning is done in our own time and that makes 36 hours for a unit that's one unit of work um, we could look at the timetable there on the website it's not available quite yet but it will be available soon for 2023 and just to mention also that for Melbourne Archdiocese schools, the course offers sponsorship. The MAX offers um, sponsorship for this course. There's an application process to go through. Um, I think other Catholic education offices too may have sponsorship, just to check with them. Um, but our Melbourne Archdiocese offers that sponsorship for this course. And the course also fulfills the requirements of Meditation Australia, uh, which is like the peak body for, for meditation of all different types in Australia. Um, it's on their website, so you can become a full member of Meditation Australia from completing this course. John, would you like to add some thoughts on, on that? Well, I suppose ju just to make um, the, the point that um, we, we keep the online sessions outside of uh, school holidays 
so that um, so we we'll bal we'll balance them out in that way so people's holidays then are, are free if the teachers I think appreciate that uh, so it's spread over the year and um, in different fashions and um, I think it's manageable for that reason and the 12 hours of homework as Chris mentioned uh, does involve students being introduced to practices uh, and um, uh, to, for, to help students discover what is the best form of meditation for them. But I think you've covered all the points there, Chris, that uh, need to be covered, except the next slide, perhaps. It's, uh, One hmm. final slide, and then, then it'll be the opportunity to ask any, any questions, et cetera. Um, and that is just for the further questions around enrolment. Um, on the website there, and this PowerPoint will be made available to you, there's a how to enrol on our CTC website. Chris Norf, our registrar, he can help with any, any kind of technical, if you like, questions about enrolment. Um, John and I are very available for questions about the course or concerns, whatever, um, any questions you might have. Um, and there's a resource that you'll be sent, um, which gives you a taste really of the kinds of things we do in the course that gives some background to Christian meditation, some resources for how we would lead meditation. Um, and also this PowerPoint is, will be made available as well. So that's kind of our content for tonight, a, a summary of the course and the possibilities. Perhaps you've got some questions um, or comments to make. I'll stop the share and open it up to the group. Um, please, any, any questions that come out of that? Thank you. There's uh, over, over Zoom, this idea of face to face contact, but face-to-face -face sort of somehow indicates to me we actually meet in person. Is there any possibility of that? Well, we, we had discussed that, but um, and we have that perhaps at the, the back of our minds as a possibility, but the advantage of doing it by Zoom is that we can have people from around Australia who can take part. Mm, in fact, we have people from overseas who take part. And uh, mm. uh, for people to... To have to have to have to have to come into Melbourne, uh, to East Melbourne, uh, for many people that would be uh, inhibiting, uh, too difficult. They just don't have the time for it. So at, at the present, we do it uh, online uh, in this fashion. Um, perhaps in the future, we might make it possible for students to actually come in. So we have a double thing, both in person and online. Mm -hmm. But for the moment, we're um, doing it simply online for practical reasons. Can I ask what is the cost? Um, I'm not good on money on on costs figures. Um, Chris, would you would you off off the top of your head? Um, that's a question to ask for of Chris Norf um, yeah. as well. There's difference between auditing and award. But perhaps Chris, you might like. To, have you got any information or you might? A sort of ballpark figure of a, a one unit is is around between two thousand and two and a half thousand. Would that be right, Jenny? No, next year's figures is two thousand eight hundred and eighty-two dollars a unit. Okay. And so would you, would you have the the figure for the auditing student, um, Jenny? It's the same as this year, six hundred and fifty dollars. Right. Well, so there's a considerable Three, difference know. between the auditing and the award mm -hmm. uh, figure. Yes. And there are three units, obviously. Yes. Thanks, yeah. Judy. Um, is each unit thirty-six hours? Yes. Um, each with twenty-four hours, as we said, face to face, or you know as in live sessions and 12 hours you do in our own time to make the 36 um, are the Saturday sessions weekly. They're done in blocks, aren't they, John, of four, sat 
for Saturdays. Have a mention of that, John. Yes, they're, 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 they're done in blocks. And um, so that, uh, in fact, it's blocks of three, um, blocks of three, actually. And um, so the uh, three Saturdays, uh, and then well, where there's 10 till 12 and two till four. So four hours on a Saturday, then three Saturdays in a row. Then there's a break of about four weeks when students are, well, there's no, no, no online sessions. In fact, those students who are doing the ward have the time then to prepare their assessment, uh, their assignments during that um, during that time. That's why it's spread over the year uh, in ma in manageable doses. And and that would be doing the whole course, if wouldn't it, John? And you know, if a student just did one, they would probably have a you know. Their oh yes, exactly. So yeah. the person who's doing just the one unit. Then of course there may be longer gaps. There, there are longer gaps because the whole thing is spread out uh, over the year. So each of the units is like a year-long unit, not quite, but they sort of they come together rather than doing one unit and then the next and then the next. They they intertwine together. It's been a more holistic approach to to the course like that. That's right. Is the assessment for each unit additional to the 36 hours? It, it is, yes, it is. Um, so the 36 is our time and the, 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 act, the activities, the 12 hours of activities are separate to assessment. They're part of the learning of the unit. And then on top of that, we would do these assessment tasks. Okay. The assessment tasks are likely to be, um, are you able to elaborate the style of assessment? Sure. Generally speaking, they would be in writing, uh, generally, but uh, as Chris mentioned for his particular unit that he's, he, he's the, the, the main person there, it's, it's the, the formation of a portfolio. Mm -hmm. yeah, a yeah. different type of activity. So um, that yeah. But but it's very experiential. Yes, mm -hmm. and of course the uh, the uh, the homework part of the homework is very much involved with experiential mm -hmm. uh, activity. Okay. So it's not just always writing. There's uh, there's other types of activity going on. Um, uh, I can provide for, you know we can provide further detail, but that would be a very detailed presentation, which I think um, we need to have a. No. Well, time. Um, question. So if we did one unit, it might take 10 weeks, and but yet they might uh, interweave with other units. That's right. So that you might take take one unit and you might, uh, one unit in the whole year, and that would be spread over a considerable length of time. Um, uh, so it's uh, the, the, the thing is spread and intertwined. Pat? Okay, thanks. So my question is sort of similar to Jared's, and it's just something I'm finding it hard to get my head around. So looking at the dates from 2020, you have three subjects, and if you were to study part-time, those three subjects, they wouldn't be the one, then you do the second, then you do the third. They would overlap somewhat. Is that correct? Yes, they, they, they intertwine. Like, like a tapestry, they okay. intertwine, and uh, uh, so that you uh, and they intertwine for a purpose. It's because one uh, leads neatly into another okay. topic, and okay. so on and so forth. So, like, like a tapestry where the colours inter okay. interweave. Inter inter okay. inter so, if you were to do it that way, um, because I think I saw that you could do it. Um, do the course in six months full time, or I think it said up to two years part time. So if you were to do it one subject at a time, but with the intertwining, how long would the course take? Well, it's really it's if you, if you do all three course all three units uh, in the one year, of course it takes a year. If yeah. you could do one unit, it spread spread a different point through the year. If you take two units, likewise, it's spread different points through the year. So I think this business of 
doing it in six months. Uh, I don't know quite where that came from. Yeah, um, I, I could be mistaken. Um, okay. So yeah. what would be the longest way that you could do the course? Like if you wanted to really enjoy it, immerse yourself in it, um, you know, get as much as you could out of it, and you were happy to spread it out a bit to do that, how might how might that look? Well, I think, Chris, would be you could say one a year. Is that, that, that'd be correct, wouldn't it? You could do one unit a year. Or does one have to do within two years? I've gone and forgotten on that one. You have to do it within two years, I'm afraid. All right. Yep. So you can do yeah. one unit in the first year and two units in the second year. That's what we would normally recommend. Right. And that would kind of fairly spread it out evenly because of the workload in the one year subject and the workload in the two year subjects. Yes, it's spread, spread, spread very neatly through the year. Okay, yeah, that answers my question. That's great. Thank you. And there is a question. There are, there are others I know, but would we recommend it over one year or two years? Um, and it's a little bit, we wanted to do it in a year just so if people thought, yeah, I just want to really focus and say I'll do the three units and they fit together and work together. Um, but it's very, very, um, if possible, to say, no, I will just do one unit in the first year and then do two in the second year. That's a really good way to go. And it, a little bit depends on our time and where we're at with things. They're both good options. Um, you mentioned the award approach. Now, that was the one which was um, 2800 per unit here. Yes. And the audit, the other one, sort of um, where we just participate, but not really worry too much about the award. I mean, that would be roughly how much? That Any would other? be six threes. What are six threes? Eighteen to to audit the course, and then you don't get the award. You know, you, of course, you of course, that, that's the difference. And you, yeah. but you get to be participate fully and and so forth. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you can actually, with the award, the units in for an award, it doesn't have to be the graduate certificate in teaching meditation. You can count them towards our other degrees. Mm -hmm. And also with the fees for an award, you've got the, opp the opportunity for using fee help, which is government sponsorship. And they will pay the fees and you only have to ever pay them back if you ever earn over a certain amount. Yeah. Well, I'm an old guy, 70 years old, sort of on a pension. Yep, you would definitely qualify of not having to pay it back. And you won't be the first pensioner who utilises fee help and fingers crossed you won't be the last. <laughs> okay. That's good information, Jenny. And that would be available to other students too in grant. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. If so what, what's it going to do? Oh, sorry. If a person was auditing the course, could you choose to do a unit and not the other two, like you're attracted to a particular one? Very much so, yes. Okay. Um, and you could do that. And actually, I, to mention that people take one of the units and use it for another award too. They, you, don't ha you don't have to do all three at all. And yeah, they, they're, they're available for sure. Thank you, Chris. Um, and the, they are, we record each session on the Zoom, someone asked. And so if a person is not able to be there, they can watch the lectures later, as well as having access to the, the lectures just to watch back too, um, in general. Is this session being recorded? It is, yeah. And will be made available on the website, Jenny, at some point, I believe. Yes, definitely by um, Friday of this week. And thanks, Atavia. Um, this, the course, I would say, Atavia, we've got a graduate with us who did the course 10 years ago. Uh, wonderful to have you here. Um, I would say we've probably, you know, with the idea of weaving the units together more closely and being more experiential, and I suppose just we're more aware of some of these contemporary changes than over those 10 years and the dialogue involved. Having said that, it's still this tradition, you know, so 
there are some changes to the content. It does keep evolving. Perhaps we could talk more about that if, you, if you're interested, yeah. Yeah, and I was just wondering for the Christian meditation, you have the Christian meditation and sort of the centered in prayer. Well, that, that is part of it, part certainly. Of it, that, that, that is part, yeah. yes, uh, part of it. But there's a whole range of uh, forms of meditation in the Christian tradition. That's so, right. So we yeah. touch upon those as well, because to open up the richness of it all. And yeah. Javier, uh, because uh, uh, I've, I've taught you. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. uh, it, uh, so the course that I've, I've been, I constantly update uh, my presentations. Yes. So, so there's there's changes there as well. Yeah, I thought it was interesting because when we did it, we only did the Christian meditation and sort of the center in prayer, if you like. And uh, but it would be interesting to to know others as well. Yes, yes. That is certainly an evolution, I would say, John. That it's opened up more. The, the landscape has opened in those ten years for sure. And perhaps the mindfulness and the mindfulness meditation and the yeah, yeah the yeah. But but there but there are many others too. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for that, Pat. Um, which subject would you do? How would you handle the course if you did it part time? And I, John, I would answer, you know, maybe meditation in the Christian tradition is a good place to start with the course. It, well, so the, 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 the title of that unit would be the first one that we talked about, which is yeah. meditation and evolving tradition. I yeah. think to start with that one and then to do the other two the following year. And uh, that's, I think, your question, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm, in terms of sponsorship, I'm not sure, I don't, I, I, I'm not sure, Jenny, you may know more, it, whether it's the whole cost covered in sponsorship from the Melbourne Archdiocese or some. It depends. Um, like with the Melbourne Archdiocese, they will, you have to pay a third of it normally. Mm. And the school pays a third and the Archdiocese pays a third. With um, Ballarat and Sale and Sandhurst, it's different within okay. each. So um, it's just best to, if you just ask, contact um, Sponsored Study at Max um, and so email Andrea and she'll be able to talk you through um, how the sponsorship will work for you if you're going through Max. There's, um, I don't know who the contacts are off the top of my head for Ballarat and Bendigo and Sale. And of course, the other the other parts of Australia too, because uh, students come from around Australia as, as well as overseas. So true, yes. Have to find out <laughs> the whole range of possibilities there. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? If you um, did the award session, will that be recognised by the Meditation Australia? Yes. Yes, it would. Yeah, okay. yeah. So we get a certificate at the end saying we did. Not, not, it'll be different to the, um, the other. Yeah, you would be able to show that you'd, you've got the certificate, you've been awarded that certificate in guiding, in teaching meditation, um, and then that's what you would present to Meditation Australia for, for membership, yeah. So we've Is done this a, a, I'm just wondering if... Uh, yeah, there's a greater acceptance within the parishes, you know, for, I guess, meditation. Obviously prayer, but no, it's almost like prayer is something that to an extent has died. And I guess there's a renewal sort of happening. Sort of. Um, and it's almost like, you know, sort of, I guess, is it part of your idea that this course is going to lend itself to somehow a parish renewal and parish i guess uh <coughs> i know so it's more accepting meditation including silent meditation um naturally, uh, ab 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 absolutely. absolutely many parishes have meditation groups and uh the aim we have from the beginning is to uh, provide resources for the development of meditation in parishes and i think it is part of the future of the archdiocese really in my opinion 
uh, that uh, to have this private prayer or private meditation, personal uh, depthing of one's spirit uh, is really an essential part of the future. Mm -hmm. So we, we've often had conversations with the the archdiocese over the years on this on this topic. So uh, um, I think there's an answer, a quick answer, Christopher. Do you want to add anything to that? Uh, just yeah, I think that's an essential point to this, and that word renewal is a good one. You know that some of its recovery of what has been very much embedded and richly in the tradition. And something's happening in terms of renewal today in all sorts of ways. So this course is very much a part of that. And um, that it's about that formation for ourselves in the prayer itself and reflective learning to then take that into these different spaces. That's really the whole purpose of the course, yeah. And I think the fascination today, the immense success of mindfulness today is a very good sign that people want to enter into the depths of meditation. Uh, and of course, many of them will want to discover what is the Christian dimension that can be uh, explored. So I, I think there's, a, I, I, in my opinion, there's a huge future here. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll see what happens. So we just, we will stay on the line now for anyone who wants to continue to ask questions, but we're past our time. Um, so I just want to, uh, you know, to feel free to leave now if you would like to, but to thank you very much for being with us tonight. And we're so delighted to see you, your interest and, you know, whether you might want to come back and ask a question about possibilities going forward. Um, but we would just, we'd love to see you as part of the course next year. Um, so please, thank you indeed, John. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's a delight to see so many people uh, attending our short session tonight, which has gone a bit longer, but uh, that's because of the level of interest people have shown and the number of useful questions people have. People have. Um, there's some more questions coming up on the chat, which we'll uh, deal with uh, now but thank you very much and um well we hope to see you indeed anyway may 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 the spirit be with you in the months and time ahead thank you john and chris wonderful thank you, thank you all. um the year, thank you thank you the dates will be available i would imagine jenny would you have a thought on that when the timetable will be available I, I, hopefully by the end of september i can email everyone who came today the timetable when it comes available wonderful and then enrollments open the first of november so again i will send out an email to everyone who attended inviting you to come and enroll or speak to a course advisor um, to discuss what your options are. That's great. The first Saturday is um, late February, I believe, John. Um, uh, uh, yes, I think <laughs> I've got to forgotten the dates now. Is it late February or early March? I've got to yeah. forgotten. Yeah. It's around yeah. about then anyway. And about there that we start and then the last date for the course will be you know the middle of October so sort of March to October between that period is is when the classes are um, and I think yeah wonderful we will send that timetable and when that comes available the homework um linked with the three um saturday sessions or is it spread over a few more weeks the homework tends to be linked to the um sessions um that is in preparation for the sessions and then following on from the sessions so there's a bit of flexibility there um there is an advantage in a person doing the homework prior to the session, it might be, for example, to read a text and something and to get their minds working and some comments on what a, what they've read. And then the, so to prepare for the session 
And then, of course, the bit of homework that follows on from it would be a very much a practice, to practice what has been dealt with, the, uh, the particular form of meditation, of which there are many varieties, uh, to practice that and to well report on the practice, basically, how students have gone and was it fruitful, etc. Um, so there's a bit, a bit, bit prior, a bit following on. And um, so revolving around the actual online sessions. And with the more formal assessments, like is that several weeks after the Zoom sessions? I'm just I'm thinking oh, yes. planning around full time work and things like that. Like oh, how, oh yes, how it would look. oh yes, yes. There, 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 there's several weeks. Uh, we we've allowed four weeks, but that's a bit flexible too. But in the and our sort of overall planning, we've allowed a four week after the last session um, for students to do their prepare their assignment um that, that that's flexible too but we that, that's how we plan out the the schedule that's I wonder, just, sorry just a question about accreditation to teach and lead re that one i haven't got an answer to actually it i think perhaps Vanessa, can I pass this on to one of the our course advisors tomorrow and they can be in contact? Hopefully. Because you, you, you need very precise information there, so we don't yeah. want to say anything that might not be absolutely accurate. Thanks, Vanessa. Can I get one of the uh, facilitators to outline their meditation practice, how the day starts, and I guess uh, what they find most beneficial in styles of meditation for uh, one of the individuals individually. Here, here, among us here, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, like, how does your day start? Is there a meditation practice? Um, sort of from the material that we'll be covering, I mean, how have you kind of worked that in to your lives? Well, it's, it's very, very personal for me, of course. Everything is very personal. So what I do may not suit another person uh, because it's we all have our own particular approaches. And that's part of the purpose of the course is for a person to, to discover what works best for them. Well, well but indeed. For, but for me, but for me, if I could just say for me, yeah, good. I, I, I get up early in the morning uh, when it's dark uh, pro, uh, above all, pre preferably when it's still dark and uh, I have a little, but this is very personal, you know, I've got a little meditation hut out, outside, separate from the house and I go there and I sit for an hour uh, in stillness and uh, then in that stillness, I like the phrase from T.S. Eliot, in the stillness is the dancing. So in the stillness there where there's no reflection, no thoughts, no anything, uh, then the spring of life arises in me. And so there's this great outpouring of all things that occur, occur spontaneously and all sorts of experiences occur spontaneously. So it's in the doing nothing that lots of things happen. But that's very personal, you see, and it's uh, you asked the personal reflection on that one, so I've given to you. But that, <laughs> thank you, thank you. But that that may, may suit absolutely no one else, but it suits me, and um, it's, it's up to people to work it out. And Chris, would you like to would you like to say well, perhaps what? I, I'll take it from the point of view of a day in the course of teaching that we would start. Well. There would be experience weaved into a day, like I would teach a day, and maybe it's about teaching um, a silent approach to meditation. And part of actually learning about it is in the practice of it. And same with Lexio Divina, there's this interplay between us learning about it and actually practicing in our learning. It's it's so crucial, the practice and this encouragement to someone said to find our practice and practice it. Or as, you know, mm. John Chapman said, pray as you can, not as you can't. You know, that's sort of a, a principle here to 
because that I think what I got from John there was it's actually in the doing of it that we find out what to do as it were to sit with it and there's a gift right at the heart of all these things um and just Irene's question about is it seated in Catholicism and seated is a brilliant word for this because it's right from the source we might say and I often think of the desert tradition now when you ask that that kind of has this sense of source to it and from the beginning this kind of awareness the need to to step aside from what was normal life at the time I'm talking about the fourth century but it's it's a paradigm for prayer these men and women stepped aside from what was considered normal into this space of prayer the desert it's a symbolic thing as well if that makes sense um and it's it's so it's seated it's finding very much the source of things um and that's that's where all this flows from and yes there's then discussing what does it look like in a catholic school here or there's all these practices there but that seated place is from the tradition and that sort of for me is the richness of what we're doing is rediscovering and practicing and and then how does it how does it translate and communicate to groups right up now in 2022 John, thanks. Well, I just wanted to add to that, Chris, thank you. Uh, yes, it, it is certainly seated in Catholicism, but it is also very much, um, it's not confined to Catholicism. Uh, so it does, in fact, in, involve the Orthodox tradition, particularly uh, the Greek Orthodox um, tradition. Uh, and then, uh, as I said, said earlier on, it does touch upon other traditions like um Buddhism and Sufism and uh, mindfulness. So uh, it is not meant to be uh, restrictive uh, and people have to discover their tradition too. That's mm. very important. So we don't want to put, it's not a straitjacket whatsoever. It is just the starting point or the seated, the seated point is in Catholicism, but there, it is not confined to that. I found a beautiful lab similar practice in uh, Judaism, a mystical uh, Judaism from a rabbi. Yes. Uh, fantastic teachings, very, very similar practice. Of and course, the, the, the whole field is so rich. We have only <laughs> 36 hours in the unit. And uh, that, that, that's <laughs> why <laughs> the constant problem is what do we have to leave out? And that is, that is a real dilemma sometimes. In a way, Catholicism, I guess, uh, you know, the whole center of our doctrine, our Christian doctrine, is a trinity, which sets us apart, doesn't it, from any of the other religions, including Judaism. Um, and so I guess T.S. Eliot, you mentioned the dance at the center. I mean, the dance of the trinity, the dance of love. How, would, how John, would you sort of... Um, talk about you know its meditation and the relation to the trinity well the uh uh i speak about the up to a point but it's not a course in in dogmatic theology so we can't go too much into the into the depths of trinitarian teaching but just last saturday uh, I was speaking precisely about the uh, the distinctive character of Christian meditation, which is Trinitarian, that is relationship. So mm -hmm. the relationship of the, the three persons. And then <laughs> um, I talked about the, uh, what, what, going too much on this, but, um, and then how the, uh, I was talking about the mass, because the whole question of the connection between private prayer and public liturgy, is a big question uh, and when I'm talking about the mass as the public the principal public liturgy of the of Christianity and of the of the, of the church um, I spoke there about the whole point of divinization and that the how the person must be transformed uh, and uh, 
acquire the mind and the heart of God and enter into the Trinitarian communion so that mm. people, people commune with the communion of the Trinity. But that's getting a bit technical and <laughs> we've only got a few minutes here to be talking about this profound topic, but to, to make the point that it is brought in um, as part of the specific Christian dimension of the meditation which we talk about while not confining it just to Christianity but that does remain the the central point of it as we have to because it is um well that's what that's what where our, our emphasis lies thank you wonderful great to have that conversation it really is a conversation that the course is part of teasing out these these aspects as we go so and that's very much part of the how we how we teach the course mm -hmm. it is very much by conversation yeah. it's not just straight lecturing all the time because that doesn't it's not not sufficient not doesn't work just lecture all the time so it's very much conversation with the student so when you talk about relationship there's that uh yeah, thinking about, I guess, meditation, relationship, Christianity. I mean, how would you describe our course? And I guess that theme of relationship. I guess it's... Uh... Well, I, I, I think it is to, uh, in the process of discovering oneself, one discovers the other person. And discovering the other person, one discovers oneself. These things go backwards and forwards. And discovering the, the triune God, one discovers the other. And the whole ex experience of the person, uh, I made a point of that, uh, just my recent talk, my recent lecture, uh, the whole discovery of the person is a specifically Christian contribution to human experience. It does, the idea of the person does not exist uh, as such in the ancient Greeks and Romans and even among Hindus and Buddhists. I've done a complication there, but the, 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 the idea of the person is a specifically Christian contribution to human awareness uh, because of the, precisely because of the trinity of three persons in one God. Thank you. That sounds terribly heavy, doesn't it, David? <laughs> but I think it's no. I want you to go on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess I'm you know, trying sort of you know that Christian part of meditation because meditation is often seen as a, a Buddhist, a Hindu, a kind of oh no, because yeah, um, <laughs> whereas it's got incredible roots um, with Christianity. Yeah. Yes, ad ad adoration is at the very centre of it all. Adoration. Right, that's, that's... Right. Okay. So shall we pause there, John, perhaps? And well, there's there, there's no further questions there. Um, so I suppose we uh, um, we we finish now. Mm -hmm. But thank you very much, everyone. It's been a fantastic co uh, conversation we've had here. Wonderful.